This lecture will describe the ECG findings associated with typical atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia. AVNRT is a paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia that occurs due to a functional reentrant circuit within the nodal tissue. The electrical impulse goes round and round, typically down the slow pathway and up the fast, resulting in a regular rate of QRS complexes. Note that the RR intervals on this ECG are markedly consistent from beat to beat. The ventricular rate is rapid, usually between 140 and 280 beats per minute. Interrograde activation of the ventricles via the normal pathways from the AV node results in a narrow QRS complex. However, pre-existing aberrancy, such as left bundle branch block, can result in an AVNRT rhythm with a wide QRS complex. Putting all of that together, we could thus far describe our findings on the CCG as a fast regular rhythm with a narrow QRS complex, all typical features of a supraventricular tachycardia. Now if you look closely, you will notice that there aren't any P waves before the QRS complexes. Instead, there's a terminal deflection right after the QRS complex. Don't let this confuse you into thinking that the QRS complex is wide, because although the terminal wave abuts the end of the QRS complex, it is actually due to the P wave. Indeed, this terminal deflection is actually just the P wave showing up a little late to the party and distorting the end of the QRS complex. Retrograde conduction of a P wave is referred to as an atrial echo beat. Now let's briefly take a look at what happens during normal conduction of an electrical impulse through the heart and what happens during typical AVNRT. Normally, an electrical impulse will start in the SA node, sped through the atria to the AV node, and then finally enter the ventricles. In AVNRT, the electrical impulse starts in the AV node and then spreads out to the atria and ventricles almost simultaneously. Retrograde conduction through the atria can result in an inverted P wave and leads with predominantly positive QRS complexes. Simultaneous activation of the upper and lower chambers of the heart is reflected on the ECG by overlapping P waves and QRS complexes. The combination of the two waveforms may result in hidden P waves or a QRS complex with a distorted terminal portion. In leads 2, 3, and AVF, the terminal deflection can result in what looks like an S wave. Since it's not actually due to the QRS complex but the P wave, it is referred to as a pseudo S wave. In leads V1 and V2, the terminal deflection can result in what looks like an R wave. This ECG reveals both pseudo S waves in lead 2 and pseudo R primed waves in V1. In sinus rhythm, however, none of these appendices should be present. Unfortunately, many ECGs of AVNRT do not reveal either pseudo S or R primed waves. In this ECG of AVNRT, the P wave is buried behind the QRS complex in lead 2. The P wave is visible in lead V1, however, in the form of a pseudo R primed wave. Other less common atypical forms of AVNRT also exist, in which the P waves can occur before the QRS complex. As well, the ECG may reveal coinciding findings such as electrical alternands or diffuse ST depressions.